Hey, so before we get to this holiday tradition I've been doing for several years on 7MS, first I wanted to apologize for something, and then I wanted to do a listener shout out. So the apology, apologies from us to you, we have not done a great job of establishing a clear line of communication for those of you, those listeners who want to reach out and just share a reflection or share a story or leave a comment. Uh, so sorry about that. That's on us. We've tried different ways to do it. If you're a longtime listener, you know, we started a phone number actually for six months to a year. Here's the key. It only lasted six months or a year. Why? It started off great. Uh, but then we started getting some weird spam calls, the spam voicemails, then a weird or a couple creepy messages and, and text messages. It just got weird, right? It's always just a few apples in the barrel that spoils the whole thing. So we shut that down, but I don't think I ever told you we, <laughs> we shut it down. So I'm so sorry for that. If you've been using that number or trying to reach out and you never get a response, it's because it no longer exists. So sorry about that. So what do we do? I wanted to establish easy, clear, old school ways for you just to reach out if you have a comment or reflection. Here are the top two ways to do it. First, the best way, go to 7minutestories.com, the number 7minutestories.com, click the contact tab and drop us an email there. There's a contact form. Isn't it funny how we just go back to the stuff that works, all the noise, and it's just like, send us an email. So do that. Send us an email and we'll get back to you. The second way and the second best way I would say is uh, Instagram. I like their direct messaging feature. So if you want to uh, leave me a message there, I'm not on there all the time. You might have to you know, send a couple of messages just to kind of get my attention there, but follow me on Instagram and send me a DM. So those are the ways going forward. And we want to hear from you. Send those reflection, those comments, those thoughts to those two places. And we love to respond to you. And also if you're open to it, uh, share it on the show. If you want a listener shout out, uh, drop me a message those ways. And if you don't want one, just let us know and just say, Hey, I don't want you to say anything on the air, but I just wanted to tell you X, Y, Z, all of that stuff works. Okay. Speaking of listener shout outs, got to give a shout out to Michelle from Canada, Michelle. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for your listenership, your comments, the stories that you've shared in reflection on some of the stories that you've heard. It's been amazing. And I just wanted you to hear my voice tell you, thank you. I see you and I appreciate you. Uh, Michelle also has been leading the charge in Canada. In the last couple of years, we've experienced a big spike in Canadian listenership. So shout out to Canada, our, all our listeners in Canada, our neighbors to the north, literally, I'm in Ohio, Northeast Ohio. You guys are like my neighbors to the north. So thank you. And thanks again to Michelle. Michelle found me, I believe, actually on my YouTube page. So another platform where you can connect with me, uh, go to YouTube, type in Aaron Califato, and you'll see my page. And most people there enjoy the seven minute stories inspired short videos I put up there. And recently Pete Whitehead, our artist, and I have been experimenting with some cool animations that have been really well received. You might enjoy them as well. Okay. Thank you. And let's get to this week's episode. The man to whom I'm going to introduce you was not a Scrooge. He was a kind, decent, mostly good man, generous to his family, upright in his dealings with other men, but he just didn't believe all that incarnation stuff, which the church proclaims as Christmas time. It just didn't make sense. And he was too honest to pretend otherwise. He couldn't swallow the Jesus story about God coming to earth as a man. I'm truly sorry to distress you, he told his wife, but I'm not going with you to church this Christmas Eve. He said he'd feel like a hypocrite, that he'd much rather just stay at home, but that he would wait up for them. And so he stayed and they went to the midnight service. Shortly after the family drove away in the car, snow began to fall. And he went to the window to watch the flurries getting heavier and heavier, and then went back to his fireside chair and began to read his newspaper. Minutes later, he was startled by a thudding sound, then another, and then another, sort of a thump or a thud. And at first he thought, someone must be throwing snowballs against his living room window. But when he went to the front door to investigate, he found a flock of birds huddled miserably in the snow, 
They'd been caught in the storm and in a desperate search for shelter had tried to fly through his large landscape window. Well, he couldn't let the poor creatures lie there and freeze. So he remembered the barn where his children stabled their pony. That would provide a warm shelter if he could direct the birds to it. Quickly, he put on his coat, his galoshes, and tramped through the deepening snow to the barn. He opened the doors wide and turned on the light, but the birds did not come in. He figured food would entice them, so he hurried back to the house, fetched breadcrumbs, and sprinkled them on the snow, making a trail to the yellow-lighted wide-open doorway of the stable. But to his dismay, the birds ignored the breadcrumbs and continued to flap around hopelessly in the snow. He tried catching them. He tried shooing them into the barn by walking around them and waving his arms. Instead, they scattered in every direction except into the warm, lighted barn. And then he realized that they were afraid of him. To them, he reasoned, I am a strange and terrifying creature. If only I could think of some way to let them know they can trust me, that I'm not trying to hurt them, but to help them. But how? Because any move he made tended to frighten them, confuse them. They just would not follow. They would not be led or shooed because they feared him. If only I could be a bird, he thought to himself, and mingle with them and speak their language. Then I could tell them not to be afraid. I could show them the way to safety, to the warm barn. But I would have to be one of them so they could see and hear and understand. At that moment, the church bells began to ring. The sound reached his ears above the sounds of the wind, and he stood there listening to the bells. Adeste Fidelis. Listening to the bells, pealing glad tidings of Christmas. And he sank to his knees in the snow. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.